my name's Ian Lake. I'm a GP and I have type 1 diabetes, which I manage with a ketogenic lifestyle. In line with many others who use this lifestyle, I have managed to halve my insulin doses, reduce my hypo frequency, and my HB1C is tending to the normal non-diabetic range. This method of managing type 1 diabetes is easy to learn and safe. I think it should be an option for all people with type 1 diabetes. Hi, my name is Dr. Neil Moody Jones. I'm a GP partner and diabetes lead for New Forest Primary Care Network. Um, I have the pleasure to work with Dr. Camilla Jansen and Dr. Nicola Osborne, who are also firm believers in the use of real food, low carbohydrate diet approach. Um, at the beginning of last year, we uh, introduced a new letter um, promoting the use of lower carbohydrate diets to our patients with type 2 diabetes. Um, and it included this page with examples of lower carbohydrate foods and also some links to some online resources. Um, these were new patients um, and we tracked what happened to the first 14 patients who received my letter. Here you can see the change in their HbA1c. All their HbA1c levels dropped. I've not excluded anyone. They just had a three page letter, no medication. Some had a conversation. Um, 12 out of 14 dropped their HbA1c level below 48. The average level dropped from 53 to 42. And you can see that even just after five weeks, people were dropping their levels significantly. I decided we really needed to spread this approach. Uh, and so I started working on a new website as part of our PCN website, uh, which is now uh, live. Um, this includes Dr. Unwin's diet sheet as published in BMJ Nutrition with permission. Um, and it also includes pages on each meal. And here you can see also examples of various uh, lower carbohydrate alternatives for patients. And we've had really nice feedback from patients and clinicians on our website. As a PCN, we um, hope to halt the growth of type 2 diabetes in our population. And I think my graph shows that this is potentially possible. Um, and also we've got some catching up to do. We really want to try and put uh, over 100 patients into remission. Um, it'd be great if we could reinvest some of that drug budget into CGM, short-term CGM for newly diagnosed type 2 patients, because I think that'd be really beneficial. But you can also see some of the other benefits there. Two minutes. We did it. Thanks. Hello, my name's Gail Gary and I'm a practice nurse. Back in 2014, a patient I was seeing reverses diabetes, and that got me really curious for more information. Since 2016, I've been offering a low-carbohydrate approach to help improve and reverse pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes, high blood pressure and obesity. In October 2019, I started group consultations for type 2 diabetes remission. Currently, 12 out of the 17 participants have an HbA1c below 48 millimoles. The average weight loss is 10.2 kilos and the average drop in HbA1c is currently 16 millimoles. One lady in the group has completely avoided insulin and reversed the diabetes and two of the oldest participants aged 72 and 79 who had diabetes for more than 20 years have reversed their diabetes and come off blood pressure medication. And this is a lady I've recently seen who has lost 45 kilos and dropped her HbA1c from 118 to 29 using a low carbohydrate diet and time restricted eating. I've been a nurse for 22 years and I have never ever seen a drug regime that produces health results like this. Hi, it's Sam Kwok here. I'm one of the GPs with the Aspen Medical Practice. Um, my partner Nikki Wilson and I run the Eat Real Food program at the Aspen. We basically promote real food first with varying degrees of carbohydrate restriction. The whole program is based around the four pillars of health, food, movement, sleep and stress, like the four legs of a chair, all are equally important. We are very ably supported by our fantastic diabetes nurses and we're very excited as this month we're training all 17 healthcare assistants and nurses in the Eat Real Food approach to support the growing numbers of diabetics and pre-diabetics. We're also massively lucky to have an amazing um, Eat Real Food patient support group that's run by patients for patients. Very exciting to uh, watch the peer support empower other patients. We are also working collaboratively with Gloucestershire Healthy Lifestyles as we believe health coaching is definitely the way forward, particularly with patients who are struggling with lifestyle change or who are just generally ambivalent about, uh, about change.
um, that we will be launching Eat Real Food Bite Size, which is uh, the education program broken down into bite sized videos or chunks um, on our Eat Real Food website, which we hope to launch in the next couple of months. So watch the space. Thanks. Hi, my name's Holly Hayward. I'm the practice nurse at Heartland Surgery. I just wanted to spend a minute today to explain why I feel a low carbohydrate approach is working better than the standard approach within our community. And that's because people are finally understanding how their diabetes works and that low carbohydrate means that their HbA1c reduces, their weight reduces and things like their pain get better. Also things like their breathing with their asthma improves when they lose weight on a low carbohydrate approach. I feel that the job satisfaction is much better now with my diabetes work and that's because when I see my patients the majority of the time the HbA1c's are improving and their weight is reducing which I could never say before when I had my diabetic clinics. Hi I'm Ollie and I'm a social prescriber for Coastal Medical Partnership PCN here in New Milton, Hampshire. Um, I've been running low carb groups on Zoom uh, for the past year or so. So I've run four cohorts, each with around four to eight patients in it in each. And yeah, the feedback I've got anecdotally is really good. Although I've never met uh, most of the patients, I've um, had really good experiences of their feedback, losing weight, feeling better, not really having low carb put to them before as an option to help them manage their weight or reverse uh, their diabetes or at least improve their blood sugar control. And I think this this is a kind of a first tactic in my view. Um, and yeah, I'm keen to push it out far and wide. My name's Tom Maylands and I've been using a real food lower carbohydrate approach in my clinical practice for about three years now. Um, uh, I'm not diabetes lead, but I've engaged my practice um, to use this option for uh, many patients um, struggling with obesity, lipid profile problems, fatty liver, uh, diabetes and pre-diabetes as well as many other areas and I've seen benefit even from brief verbal advice, maybe some um, small uh, short written uh, resources um, and on a brief search I can, I can see that there's at least 30 people in, in my practice that have, um, have aborted their pre-diabetic uh, trajectory um, just with this this brief advice. Um, I've also seen um, improvements in, in other areas, uh, perhaps obvious areas such as uh, lipid profiles, um, but less obvious areas like uh, sex hormone profiles. Um, I want to expand this field um, locally, but also hope that, uh, uh, that on a national level, hopefully metabolic health will become uh, one of the key areas of investment for, for primary care and public health resources and hope that a low carb approach um, is a, a flagship treatment for this. Thanks. I'm Dr Ruth Trapsell and I'm a GP in Heartland Surgery in North Devon. We've been, as a team, using the low-carbohydrate approach for our patients with type 2 diabetes and obesity for the last three years now. And we really have seen some remarkable outcomes during that time. Lots of our patients who have type 2 have got much better control now, and this is without starting new medication. This is, you know, this is often just using diet alone. So currently, I think we have about 51 of our patients with type 2 have their HbA1c below 48. That's something that we didn't see before, certainly not without using lots of medications. We're also seeing obviously really exciting outcomes with our pre-diabetics. So the vast majority of, of patients diagnosed with pre-diabetes will manage to get their HbA1c down below 42. This adds up to us um, being able to stop lots of medication um, and also avoiding starting new medication. So this is obviously really exciting because this feels like it must be really good value for, for the NHS. So we wish we'd done this sooner and we'd really encourage any other practices out there who are contemplating following a, a a low carbohydrate approach um, just to yeah, get cracking with it. There's lots of support out there. There's lots of people doing it now. I'm Dr. Kesa Singh Sadra. I'm a GP in Slough, Berkshire, a partner there since 1989 and looking after the diabetics since. Practice population of just over 10,600, 90% of them being South Asian origin and nearly 1,300 diabetics in the practice, adult prevalence of 16% and an over 65 prevalence of nearly 50%. My low carb journey started around 2003 looking at the glycemic index and then the glycemic load of common consumed foods, then looking at alternatives to the foods with lower GI content. 
I use the Freestyle Navigator for uh, recording blood sugar profiles for the common foods, and this was the precursor of the Freestyle Libra. I used those blood sugar profiles as a means of educating and convincing patients to change. An audit of 150 patients in 2010 to 2012 showing dramatic HbA1c drops of over 60 millimoles and reducing oral medications. In 2012 to 2014, I did an audit on 290 patients demonstrating HbA1c drops of over 100 millimoles, achieving a massive 116 millimole drop in four months. Having been achieving remission since those years, both according to the current guidelines and what I believe to be a more accurate and true remission by confirming with a glucose tolerance test. So highest prevalence of type two diabetes in the locality and Southeast, we were one of the highest HbA1c target achievers with the lowest cost of diabetes related prescriptions one of the lowest hospital admission rates for diabetes related problems in the locality. Finally, year on year, despite a challenging population, massive prescribing savings, 33% under national average, 66% savings on insulin prescriptions, and if extrapolated to the nearly 4 million diabetics in the UK, this could lead to a massive 400 million pounds saving each year. Thank you. Hi, I'm Don Collins. We run an insulin resistance clinic here in Leon Sowland in Hampshire. We're currently using lateral flow devices to measure insulin levels and get some interesting graphs. The lateral flow device looks like this. Normal Lancet, as you would for glucose, you fill a pipette up to the black line, a little bit more blood than normal, into the well, four drops of a buffer solution. Take a picture after 15 minutes, and then you get a result. It links to a graphics website where you can get some nice results like this. Insulin sensitive individual, insulin all in the single figures. And here's an insulin resistant patient after 75 grams of glucose, insulin shoots up to the mid 40s. Good morning, I'm Dr. Claire Neeland, a GP. I've been using a lower carb approach with my patients for a number of years now for conditions such as type two diabetes, metabolic syndrome, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and obesity. It's really opened my eyes as to how lifestyle can be used um, to treat and reverse chronic disease and really how the high carbohydrate ultra processed Western diet is the cause of so much chronic disease. Patients love the low carb, low carb approach, particularly when we start deprescribing and clinicians really enjoy it because we're not constantly giving patients more and more medication. I'll just briefly share with you a few graphs from the patients, uh, a couple of the patients I've used low carb with, and you can see the amazing and sustainable results that are achieved. In my opinion, low carbohydrate approach should be first line. Hi, I'm Dr. Sue Beckers. And as a GP, I've recommended real foods to my patients for health. But since 2018, I've been inspired and had training to use therapeutic carbohydrate restriction for diabetes. In groups, in workshops, using books, and the great resources that are out there, speaking holistically to people and metabolically. And people love it. They see their weight and their HbA1c's change in the right direction at the same time as they give up medication, for diabetes, hypertension, arthritis and reflux. They feel well. So if this works, we should be getting this on the NHS. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dr. David Oliver, I'm a GP. And my name is Dr. Kim Andrews, I'm also a GP and a gypsy in diabetes, and we work together at the Fresh World Health Centre in rural Essex. Here's a video to let you know what we've been up to. 
So our story starts around two years ago when we first heard about a low carb approach and started suggesting it to some of our family members and patients. And we soon began witnessing some spectacular successes. Meet my dad, he has been overweight my whole entire life. And so I suggested a low carb approach. And here is my dad just four months later, 23 kilos of weight down, pre-diabetes in remission and off his blood pressure medication. After a bit more research, we started recommending a low carb approach as first line dietary advice for our patients. I went to the Public Health Collaboration Conference in 2019, which I found really, really inspiring. Shortly after that, we launched the Freshwell Low Carb Project to try and spread the word across our community. We set up a website for our patients as a basic practical tool to help our patients get started. After starting our project we set a community weight loss target of one metric ton and we allowed the patients to monitor their collective pro progress um, via our beloved weight loss ometer which was kept in the waiting room and the project also spawned um, the freshwell low carb meal planner um, which has now been downloaded over six thousand times this is a 68 year old gentleman with type 2 diabetes who had been taking 72 units of insulin daily for 13 years. He went on to lose 15 kilograms in weight and his A1C fell from 55 to 42 and he is off all insulin and all his blood pressure medication. This man who presented in lockdown with new onset type 2 diabetes dropped his HbA1c from 114 to 41 in four months without medication. After about a year, much to our delight, our patients succeeded in losing their first metric ton. We shared our results with the colleagues in the PCN and as a result, our first PCN low carb health coach Sharon started work late last year. Sharon set up the Con Valley Low Carb Support Group on Facebook. Sharon now delivers a six week structured group education program via Zoom. Before each session, the patients watch a 30 minute recorded video which is presented by ourselves. Each session with Sharon lasts about an hour. The early results look really good and we are planning to clone Sharon into an army of health coaches. So that's a whistle stop tour of the Freshwell Low Carb Project. We're now hoping to spread the word across our CCG and beyond. And we're in the process of writing a second recipe book and working on other tools to support our patients. Our patients have so far lost the weight of a small car and our next target is a double decker bus.